T wow, 10 mana. Here comes Josu Vess. It's got to be a board wipe, because the uh, eight two twos with Gisela on board are going to get us killed. Today on Commander Replay, we check out this casual Aurelia deck, and when I say casual, I mean the most savage Aurelia I've ever built. Next on Commander Replay. Help support me and save 15% on singles by using the promo code REPLAY at MothershipATX.com. Commander Replay t-shirts, available in orange and colors beside orange. Welcome back, everyone. Playing some Aurelia the War Leader today. This is my quote-unquote casual Aurelia list. Uh, this seems like a decent opening hand. I think we'll keep. So, I've been noticing a trend recently where I try to play a casual game with a group of people, and someone combos out on turn six. It's been happening a lot. I played about 30 games in Vegas, and I would say it happened in probably 30 to 40% of the games that I played. Like, almost every game that I played on Saturday was an unbalanced pod. And, like, I was really trying to play my chill decks, and everyone was just on, like, turn six combo. So, I had been fighting the good fight for a long time, and the dirty combo players finally broke me. Uh, this is a combo deck. It may look like an aggro deck, it's not. This is a combo deck through and through. We don't really care about damage in this deck, we care about attacking infinitely. And, I mean, if we have to kill someone with damage, we will, but the goal is assemble the combo, end the game. Uh, that's how this deck is supposed to work. I played a slight variation of this deck in a few games already. It won both pods that it played, one on turn six, one on turn seven. Uh, the turn seven one was also through a lot of removal. And against really good opponents is the key. There's like an EC, a Narset, I think there was a Muldrotha in one of them, like nasty stuff. So anyway, that's the goal of this deck. Brings it to our turn one. There's a Tithe. Oh, what are we doing first? So next turn we'll be able to play two cards if we go Ancient Tomb... Uh, let's see, we'll play a land here, we'll go to 7, if we tithe at some point, that'll bring us to 9, we'll go to 10 when we draw, we'll drop down a land, which is 9, we'll cast the Mask of Memory, and that still puts us 1 over, okay, so, um, I think we go Ancient Tomb, Mask of Memory, start trying to get stuff out of the hand, so yeah, I did tell opponents, bring the nastiest thing you got, not CDH though, CDH is different, so we're facing a Kalia, Sean brought his Kalia deck out, Unless he's made some changes to it, his Kalia is not the most savage Kalia I've seen. Uh, I don't know, though. Maybe he's got a second version and uh, has spiced it up a little. So we'll see what he's got. Uh, in the middle, we've got Cadus piloting the Locust God. The Locust God is kind of a known quantity in that. I don't know. I've seen the Locust God win 90% of the games it's ever been in for the past, what, four, five years now? Uh, the Locust God is very heinous. And it's, uh, it's a deck that I do not particularly enjoy facing. But when you get to this level, there's probably going to be a lot of decks you don't enjoy facing. Uh, and then finally, we got DJ Wars piloting Josu Vess, and he gets off to the ramp there, Mana Crypt into a Burnished Heart. Uh, he's already halfway to a kicked Josu Vess. There's a Volokut Awakening, good card. Um, let's play the planes right here, and then we'll probably uh, tie during our opponent's turns here. Soul Ring start out of the Locust God, Mana Crypt start out of the Josu Vest. Neither of those are great for us. Does mean we're trailing in mana and that things are going to happen faster than they're supposed to. I mean, granted, in this setting, everything's going to happen faster than it's supposed to, but, you know, you hope you can avoid the Soul Ring and the Mana Crypts on the first turn. These definitely aren't going to, like, help us. <laughs> Sean makes his third land drop, so we'll try to tie at some point. I am going to try to wait for the blue player to tap out before doing that. Yeah, he's one man away from the Locust God. That's not good. There's a Vincer's Journal. We'll play the Tithe right now. Let's get Plateau and Miss Veil Plains. Actually, you know what? There's no Sunforger. Eh, nah, we'll get Miss Veil Plains. There's no Sunforger in this deck. Uh, so the thing with this deck, and I've been playing it a little bit, is that if you treat it like a combo deck, you don't need to do as many things. Like, you don't need cards that, like, bring the damage, because when you assemble the combo, that will be enough damage. And so you can cheat on certain things, like Sunforger is an amazing card, but it's slow and it's inefficient, and as good as it is, if you're just going to combo, it just kind of becomes unnecessary. So, no Sunforger today. Ah, uh, that's a Gabal Coffers. Was hoping to avoid that. Maybe this deck needs a Blood Moon. Whew, into a Runescar Demon. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Did want to get an Aven Mind Sensor in here, but ran out of room. That would be pretty tough to get it down this quick anyway. That's always one of the problems that I've had with Aven Mind Sensor. It's like, at three mana, it's just never as fast as you need it to be. Everything happens the turn before you can cast it. 
you're like, ugh, would have been able to crush them if I could actually cast this thing right now. They need to print another one at two mana. That'd be nice. I think we're also last in the turn order, which also aids in, like, how far behind I feel already. Probably shoot them all again to fast mana, honestly. Here's the planes. Didn't need that. Uh, play the plateau. Play Akiri. Equip the Mask of Memory. I really want to get, like, Silence and the three mana, was it Ranger Captain of Eos? Shut off opponent's spells and find a one drop in the process. Oh, he's going to be on Kalia with boots, I think. Yeah, there's Kalia, and he's got the boots. Let's see how bad it gets. Goes after the Locust God. Love it. Drops a Gisela. Oh, my. That's going to be some damage. Down to 26 he goes. How are we going to deal with that Gisela? There's the red. I mean, I guess he can just cast the Locust God and start trying to draw cards. Make a bunch of blockers. That Runes card demon can hit someone for 12, too. Mana Crypt. If they lose it, it's going to hurt. Oh, they want it. Disappointing. Ooh, Ancient Tomb does damage. Eek, yeah, Gisela is bad for us. Gauntlet of Power, that's not great. It resolves. Cadis did not cast anything. T wow, 10 mana. Here comes Josu Vess. It's got to be a board wipe, because the uh, eight two twos with Gisela on board going to get us killed. wonder if Cadis is running Evacuation. There's a Pure Steel Paladin. Uh, we're going to wait and see what we do here. Uh, I'm going to poke over to Sean, because Cadis has open mana. We draw a card. It's another land, don't need that. Mask of Memory trigger. Come on, fast mana. Draw. There's a piece of fast mana. Uh, it's not one of the best ones, but piece of fast mana nonetheless. Uh, discard the, I think the Arid Mesa, actually. Uh, drop in the Mox Opal. We're on, our Metalcraft is on two, so not active yet. I mean, it's probably got to be Ignite the Future. Hope for Blasphemous Act. I think that's the play. Uh, no Blasphemous Act is unfortunate. But I guess we play Sunholm, and that's all we can do. It's actually not looking great for us right now. There is a lot of damage on board, though I don't know that we're the threat. Uh, Jessica's will, wow. Yep, you're going to get seven red mana. That's a swan song. All right. Gets a bird. I mean, that bird is more damage. Yeah, I know they wanted the Jessica's will, but still. Do they have more creatures in their hand? Kalia, back to Cadis. Eh, hey, Gisela, our way. We could probably just die to the zombies if uh, Josu Vest deems it so. Oh, that's an Avacyn. Well, who's getting Avacyn? Avacyn into Cadus. Uh, if he's got blue stuff, this should force it. Etherize or something. Uh, he's going to Chaos Warp the Gisela. Fantastic. Now, that that buys us time. That needs to happen. Avacyn is still concerning. Avacyn's actually kind of an issue in that, like, she can block infinitely. So we would need Trample or some sort of evasion. It's kind of a thing. So there was another variation of this deck where I also had a bunch of sack outlet con- Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the deck, actually. So here's the list. Still testing this thing out, but the general premise is this. Get Hearth and Home on a creature, cast Aurelia, go infinite. Or get Stonehewer Giant, get Aurelia, activate Stonehewer, put a Helm of the Host on it. Those are the plans. That's all you really want to be doing. Everything else is just support to get to that place. Now, obviously, these are a lot of good cards that you might expect in an Aurelia deck. I've kind of got an ETB theme going on here with Skyclave, uh, Eldrazi Displacer, Flame Tongue Kavu to slow people down, uh, Solitude, same sort of thing. So there's like a little bit of that going on. I don't know if that's getting too cute. Also, Dockside Extortionist, you blink that. It's going to be insane. Let's see if he's got a Blasphemous Act. Unfortunately, we don't have white mana. Probably should have played the planes first. Now that I'm thinking about it, we could have protected Akiri. That could potentially loom large. If a board wipe comes down. Brainstorm. Digging for answers. Ooh. Sean's got a smothering tithe. Okay. Yeah, we're drawing cards like crazy. That's not amazing. He's going to have all the mana. He's down to three cards, though, and we kind of fizzled the card draw right there. So, don't know. Don't know. Let's see how things go. Uh, Chromatic Lantern. Oh, wow. Actually, Blasphemous Act doesn't even stop, Sean. It stops the zombies, but... Uh, I wonder if now that gisela has gone, if he goes over to Sean. Because, you know, there's some problems over there. Also, like, once the Avacyn untaps, it's really hard to attack. Smothering Tithe? I mean, they have all the mana in the world. They should be paying for this. They don't. Coffers, doubled mana, and mana crypt? Yeah, they should be paying for that. Uh, Bolus of Citadel is bad news. Razakit's right. Search your library for a car. Uh-oh. Put it in your hand, then shuffle. Definitely gonna need an Avon Mind Sensor. Hedron Archive. Off the top. 
Soren. Ooh. It's going to make Sean's life 10. Uh-oh. Sean's about to get deleted. I've always hated this card. I mean, in the setting we're in, it's fine, but, like, people have been playing this for years, and it just feels so bad. There's an Esper creature that does it, too, which I played a couple times. I played it, like, twice, and after that I realized, like, people hate this card. It feels terrible. Yeah, he's putting out some damage. We uh, need to get going here. We need to find cards that matter. We've hit a lot of lands. Uh, they all have menace. Sean can't block, so I think he's going down. Sean goes down. Turn five. Wow. It's a nasty play from our opponent. Hopefully they get stuck with a land on top of this Bolas Citadel. If our life gets too low, they can do the sacrifice 10 non-land permanents thing. Swiftfoot Boots. Uh, okay, play the Plains. Play Pure Steel Paladin. Play Dowsing Dagger. Pure Steel Paladin, draw Dowsing Dagger. Uh, we'll give Cadus some plants, I guess. Use the ability. Sword of the Animus. Uh, free equip to the Akiri. I think we're gonna hold back for a second. Uh... I know we could get Sword of the Animus, but I think, we, I think we're think we trying to dig to a board wipe. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, swing into Josu Vess. They are wide open. Draw a card. Savine's Reclamation is not a board wipe. They take the hit. Dousing Dagger. Mask of Memory. Transform the Dousing Dagger. Draw two cards. Uh, Teferi's Protection. Skyclave Apparition. Uh, those both do stuff. This card, this Alpine Meadow. Oh, we lost Metalcraft when that happened. It's not great. What is this? Four or less? Yeah, it doesn't hit the uh, Bolas Citadel. It is not amazing. We could get the boots into play right here. Yeah, let's cast the boots. Uh, draw another card. Use the ability. Strip mine is not it. Uh, free equip to the Pure Steel Paladin, I guess. Anything we can do on one? Doesn't look like it. So I guess we just protect with the Kiri's ability and Fairy's protection. Uh, if they try to ether flux us, then we try to, then we try to tip fairies in response, is the play. We just need to survive, because now we're starting to catch up on mana. Discard this planes. Oh, we need to discard more than that. We'll discard the misspell planes also. Oh, need to keep going. Is there two turns left in this game? Yeah, we'll draw more cards. Um, if not, we can sun tighten all this stuff back too, so discard all the lands. Oh, we should have stripped mine the Cabal Coffers. So what we should have did, that's a high tide. He only has one card in hand, though. I mean, I guess if it's a wheel, that does something. Locust God. Uh, they're going to draw and discard. Don't have the wheel yet. They make some blockers. They could poke down this Soren Markov. Wouldn't be the worst idea. Mana Crypt. Coffers. Ugh. Need to shoot that Coffers. It's going to ping the Flyer, yep. Finale of Eternity. Destroy up to three target creatures with toughness X or less. If X is ten or more, return all creatures. Okay. Oh, yeah, they uh, they get they get their burnish heart back. More mana ramp. Uh, Locust God's gonna go back to its hand for delayed trigger on the stack. If for some reason we don't have to Teferi's protect, maybe we think about Volakut awakening. Uh, he's going big attack our way. Yeah, that'd be lethal. It's uh, Teferi's protection time. We need to find some answers. We're going to have like 11 mana when we untap, which is pretty good. Turn 6, Boros deck. We ramping, but need to find things that matter. We've got the Volokut Awakening. Uh, Cadus goes down. Just us. It's all up to us. Extra planar lens, more mana ramp. Oh, man. Yeah, we should probably take down some of that. We have a lot to do. Uh, Army of the Dam, more tokens. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's got to be a board wipe. Board wipe? Eh, I mean, it could also just be get the win. Board wipe and win are both reasonable outcomes. Um, and there's a feast and famine. That's how it starts. Uh, so probably have to Skyclave Apparition, shoot the Burnished Heart, get the feast and famine. Pretty much going to have to be Aggravated Assault, though. Oh, there's no Waves of Aggression in the deck. It's not great. I mean, I guess we could still get to a board wipe and survive. Okay. Yep, that's what's got to happen. Uh, Feast and Famine. Draw a card. Bloodstained Mire. Play the Sacred Foundry. Maybe we're playing it tapped? Play the Skyclave Apparition. Exile the Burnished Heart. I think opponent's thinking about whether to crack it or not. Oh, is he going to do the lose 10 life thing? Yeah, each opponent loses 10 life. Okay. Uh, I guess that does cause a problem in that, yeah, they can't untap with that board state. All right. Gauntlet's been thrown. Uh, free equip this to the Pure Steel Paladin. Free equip this to the Pure Steel Paladin. 
Uh, how much mana is left? One, two, three, four. Uh, if we, yeah, we're going to play a land, and if we double strike, we can use the mana, Vala could Awakening, put a bunch of things on the bottom, uh, and give ourselves an opportunity to look at more cards. Play the Sacred Foundry, untapped. Yeah, I think that's everything we need to do. Go to combat. This one at their face, this one at the Planeswalker. Akiri trigger. Oh, got there. <laughs> got there. All that stuff we were worried about having to do, don't have to do it anymore. We can still do it anyway, though. Give this thing double strike. Beast and Famine, Mask of Memory. Draw two. Discard the fetch land. Untap. Don't even need to Volicode Awakening. Hit again. Feast and Famine. And draw two. Oh, that's Helm of the Host. Uh, Discard... I guess the land. Cast Aggravated Assault. Activate Aggravated Assault. Do it again! Send both. Draw a card. More triggers. Uh, there's that board wipe we finally need. Uh, discard the Prophetic Flame Speaker, I guess. Everything untaps. How does this work? Activate only as a sorcery. Bummer. Opponent's down to six. Sajiri Shelter. Aggravated Assault. I've already played a land. One, two, three, four, five mana left. Yeah, we can just... Both of our board wipes are right next to each other. Not ideal for what we've been staring down all game. <laughs> Send it. What's crazy, too, we haven't been doing it. We could uh, also have Sword of the Animus during each of one of these uh, attacks. If there were still three players at the table, then, like, we'd probably do that. At some point, I'd probably try to get the Sun Titan with haste into the mix. But not necessary in this moment. Opponent takes the first strike hit. Down to 59 cards in library. Drew nearly half our library. It's not bad. It's not bad. Easy. Down they go. Casual Aurelia getting there. So it wasn't pretty. I was pretty nervous around turn five, even going into turn six. Pretty nervous going into turn six. It was do or die. And uh, the deck delivered again. With both versions of this deck combined, I've played this deck three times, and it's won all three games. A lot of games have looked like this. Maybe you're not in commanding control of the game, necessarily, but it still gets there. It's uh, It's been a really interesting journey for Aurelia, because it used to be a very fair kind of deck, uh, where you basically had to be aggro. I mean, probably the, one of the most busted things you could do was put, like, a grafted exoskeleton or use Wrecking Ogre, and that would be good to kill, like, one player. But... As time has gone on and as cards have gotten printed, she has gotten much, much stronger. Because uh, Hearth and Home is a really easy combo to set up. That's that's the other thing we could have drawn here, too. Hearth and Home Aurelia, and that also gets us there. So yeah, even though it was a little scary, things went really well right there. You know, it's the type of thing where I want one more of everything in the deck. Like, I would love another board wipe. Something like a Deafening Clarion, I think, might be really good. It does also give you the lifelink, which is going to be helpful. Would I love two more Hate Bears? Yes, I would love two more Hate Bears in the deck. Would I like more protection? Yeah, like, so, yeah, it's just that problem of, yeah, I'd like one more of everything in the deck, but that's just not how deck building works. Maybe it's possible stuff like Solitude and Flame Tongue Kavu can come out. I don't know yet. Maybe they're too slow. Uh, if we are just comboing, maybe we just need fast mana in those spots and, you know, try to go for it as fast as possible. Maybe the deck wants, uh, what's the knight there? Relic Seeker? Uh, or is it a soldier? That's another tutor, and you're looking for really specific equipment. You're looking for Hearth and Home, you're looking for Feast and Famine, and your combos are built off of that. If that doesn't work, you're going for Helm of the Host. Probably do need to get Godo back in the deck. Eh, maybe, mm, yeah, things to think about. Lots of things to think about. So, the question is, how many slots do you devote to interaction? How many slots do you devote to kind of like protection and everything else? Also, uh, what's the cat? Uh, the one that gives your artifacts hexproof can't think of the name of it uh leonin abunus i think that one and the angel with metalcraft and dominable archangel also contenders for this deck because all of our combos are built off of these equipment if you can get multiple layers of protection you know one through spells and two through static effects then it's gonna go a long way so lots of things to think about still still a lot to test through i think we're gonna run another game here in a moment but hope you guys enjoyed this video as always feel free to comment like or subscribe thank you for watching I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have one new Patreon supporter in Sergeant Flintlock. Sergeant, you are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.